It is day three of uploading daily and we're already filming at quarter past midnight, so disappointed but not surprised. On tonight's program, ladies and gentlemen, we have something that's going to make you sick. Hello there, my name is Jack Edwards and welcome back to my YouTube channel. A couple of days ago I made a video talking about the 100 books that I read in 2019 and in that video I said that I wanted to make a follow-up video explaining how I actually did that because 100 books in a year is quite a lot of books, it's quite a lot of reading. I think it works out as like two books a week and I just wanted to make it like abundantly clear I guess that um, reading 100 books in a year was like a challenge that I'd set for myself and something that I, at the beginning of last year, kind of almost like researched and did a bit of reading into to see how I could get better at reading. And it sounds so silly, you know, like this is not a year two literacy lesson, like this isn't how to read, but it's how to read effectively, efficiently and proactively. And ultimately, I guess, how to read more. So today I thought I'd basically share with you what I've learned from trying to read that many books in a year um, and the little tip little tips and tricks that I learnt along the way because I know for a lot of people um, reading more might be your sort of New Year's resolution for 2020 and so I wanted to share how you can actually do that. So over the course of the last year of my life I have been writing these tricks down. Yeah this video is actually a whole year in the making and I I didn't even shower for it, I'm sorry about that. So without further ado, these are my top tips for how to read more in 2020. Number one is to set up a Goodreads account. Now I set up a Goodreads account this time last year in order to track, um, you can basically set like a reading challenge for yourself and that challenge could be to read five books in the next year or it could be to read a hundred books in the next year. Like it, you can put anything that you want and then basically what you can do on Goodreads is just keep track of what you want to read, what you're currently reading, what you've read. You can update your progress. So say you sit and read 15 pages right now, you could log that on the app which to me feels like progress and it feels like I'm actually working towards something and like achieving something just from reading so I think for me that's a really good way of feeling like it's an actual challenge and it's actually something that I'm like working towards also when you then finish a book I feel like there's a sense of achievement because you're almost ticking it off and um, you can leave a ranking and a, a review if you wanted to um, you don't have to and also um, you can read what other people have written so I think it's a really cool kind of community I, I'm a big fan of that app I will leave the link to my profile um, down below if you did want to follow it um, and keep up with my sort of reading challenge over the next year because my plan is to try to read 115 books this year which I don't know if I'll be able to do that but I'm going to give it a bloody good go but yeah I think Goodreads is a really great place to start and make it feel like an actual challenge now the next few tips are sort of more to do with keeping focus when you're actually sitting down to read so when you go to read a book like for example this one how convenient is that that that, that was there waiting for me. When I'm reading a book sometimes I do find that my brain starts to wander and I'm thinking of other things and so a few things that I have found really useful are to, so number one is just to like trace um, the lines as you're reading them. I know it sounds really silly but like it genuinely does help. I feel like it just keeps me in the zone and because I'm moving my finger along with the words um, I feel like I just focus on them a bit more. Alternatively you could use a card or a bookmark to like cover the next line so as you go down you sort of keep revealing the next line and again that's some sort of movement that you're doing whilst reading and obviously those movements aren't complicated they're sort of second nature so um, I think it gives you a lot more concentration on what the words are on the page. Alternatively use a pencil or a pen um, because I study English literature at university I find that the best reading I do is when I sit with a pencil and if there's something that I think is interesting I like underline it or put a circle around a keyword or something and I've actually tried to sort of start doing that when I'm just reading for pleasure as well because you know sometimes there's a line in a book that is just exquisite and you, you want to remember it or you think it's particularly good and even if you never refer back to it I think that because you're sort of going through all of the words with a pencil you sort of really really concentrate on them and absorb them. The final thing that I've written down that I use um, is something I do probably more in private than like in public that you're wondering where the hell this is going. It's actually just to read aloud as I'm reading through the book to myself or um, to mouth the words um, just because I think it makes me really hone in on all the little details and I don't know, I think there's something about reading aloud that um, you just read it in a different way. I do that especially for plays or poetry or things which are quite complicated and the words are a bit um, difficult to understand because it sort of, I think reading it aloud makes you understand the tone a little bit better. However, if you do that like at the bus station, people might think you're a psychopath, especially depending on what you're reading because some things are definitely not that appropriate to be reading aloud in the public. So 
be careful with that one. <laughs> now, moving away from like focusing on the book, um, something that I've been using a lot this year is audiobooks. Now, I started off with an Audible subscription, but have since um, cancelled that, and I just use audiobooks that are free on YouTube. There are some really, really great ones, and it's always worth um, just quickly searching. Um, it, it literally just type in the title and then audiobook at the end, and usually they'll come up. It's probably the video that's like 10 hours long. So, some audiobook recommendations that are on YouTube. The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, um, Patricia Highsmith's The Talented Mr. Ripley. I think all of F. Scott Fitzgerald's major books are on um, YouTube as audiobooks. I've listened to all of them as, as audiobooks. What else? Oh, The Scarlet Letter, Americana, Things Fall Apart. Loads of absolutely fantastic books that you can listen to. And listening to audiobooks is kind of like a win-win situation because it can make mundane tasks really fun. That sounds so lame, but like when I was doing the washing up, I just shut my headphones in and listened to an audiobook while I did the washing up. And because it's such a simple, boring task, you find yourself really, really focusing on the audiobook. Similarly, whenever I walk anywhere, like when I walk to lectures, I listen to an audiobook. Whenever I, you know, go shopping on my own, I'll plug my headphones in and, and um, listen to an audiobook. If I tidy my room, do my laundry, you know, anything, and it can take any amount of time that you might be able to just get through a chapter. But yeah, that's a cool way of having multiple books on the go at the same time. I also do occasionally listen to them in the gym, which I think... <laughs> Like, my brother said that's kind of a weird thing to do because most people are listening to, like, you know, drum and bass music and, like, and they're pumping iron, whereas I've got, like, American Gods by Neil Gaiman in my ears. <laughs> it's a really great way of utilising time that you don't even realise that you have. And, yeah, makes walking places, makes doing the dishes, makes time in your room a lot more interesting, so I'd really, I'd really recommend it. And that actually does quite smoothly lead me on to my next point, which is about reading multiple books at the same time. This is something that I was very sceptical about. I am a person who likes to do one task, complete it, then move on to the next task, and I feel the same, or felt the same, with reading. But actually, by reading multiple books and having multiple books on the go at the same time, I feel like I actually read more. And that's because every book has a different tone, a different mood, and sometimes you're just not in the mood to read a book about, like, the plague. So I found it good whenever I had, like, quite a dense, heavy book to also have a fun one on the side. So if I was reading something that had quite complex language and took a bit of unpicking to understand, then I'd also have something that was a bit more modern, perhaps, and maybe written um, for a younger audience, or, like, a more mainstream audience. I think that's a good way of doing it. And also, if there's, like, quite a big difference between the two books, you don't really get confused. So just some ideas, you could do um, two books which are set in different countries, two books which are written um, from the perspective of like a male and a female protagonist, books written in different time periods, so the language is sort of different. I think that's a good way of not getting confused and suddenly having the plot of Moby Dick and Robinson Crusoe like merging in your brain. <laughs> Similarly, if you're reading a really long book, get a few short ones in to kind of just tick off some books and feel like you're still being productive because if you're reading a really long book and you've been reading the same thing for like two weeks, I th Sometimes you kind of find it a bit frustrating and you're like, oh, how can I not get through this? But reading a little bit of this, a little bit of that, sometimes actually makes you more efficient with your reading. Equally though, if you are reading a book that you're just really not enjoying, don't be afraid to give it up. As much as I think it's really useful to read things that you don't necessarily like because it kind of tailors your interest a little bit and your understanding of literature, like, let them go. Let them go if you're not loving them. It's definitely a good idea if you're trying to read more, to read books and buy books that you know you'll be interested in, to read them alongside maybe books that you're taking a bit of a risk with or you're not as sure, so that you are constantly enjoying reading. My next tip is just to never be without a book. Always have one in your bag or if you can't carry one around, make sure you've got an audiobook that you could listen to because like I was kind of saying before, you can really utilise small amounts of time to just pick up a book and read a couple of chapters or a couple of pages. One thing that I've been doing which I think is really great is to have like a minimum amount that you want to read per day and that could literally be 20 pages which is not a lot at all if you get it into your routine that say every day you wake up and you read 20 pages of a book at least then you know that's going to be pretty good going over the course of a year or you could do it before you go to bed for me personally whenever i go to the library to study for the day i always start by reading 20 pages of a book because to me that gets me into the right mentality so i think getting into a routine and making reading part of your daily activities is um super beneficial and alongside that one of the things that i've been doing this year is using study spaces just to read even if I'm just reading for pleasure because if you're in an environment where everyone is working everyone is reading everyone is doing their own thing um you do just sort of get on with it but yeah I've been going to coffee shops to just read or you know using um my university's library just to read so yeah with that I think that wraps up my tips for how to read more in 2020 let me know down below what your challenge that you're setting for yourself this year is how many books do you want to read and there's absolutely no shame if you just want to read one book because last year you didn't read a single one that is still 
but something to work towards and that's still an achievement if you do it. Equally, if you want to read 150 books, I would love for you to comment at the end of the year telling me how many you managed to do, whether you managed to hit that target, um, and follow me on Goodreads if you want and we can all track each other and keep up with each other's progress. Like I said, I'll leave my link down below, but for now, thank you so, so much for watching this video. This has been day three of January, where I am uploading a brand new video every week. All of the words wanted to come out of my mouth all at once just then. I'm uploading a brand new video every weekday in January. Um, so yeah, follow along if you want. You can subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if it helped, and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye. I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.